Hello everyone, how are you doing? Welcome to another video. It's a very impromptu video, I didn't really prepare much for this, but I, I spent the morning uh, uploading stuff to DemoZoo and uploading most of the stuff that I was uploading have been uh, older issues of Demo Journal. Uh, so Demo Journal, for those who don't know, was a, a newsletter that I, I started and, and ran for like a year and a half or something like that back in 98, 99 and 2000. Um, and it was weekly and it started, well, I'm going to tell you the story, but I need to, to jump back into it. Anyways, I was doing that today and reminiscing about those days and what changed. And I decided I, I should, I should do a video about it because it's interesting information. Uh, and, then it, it's also interesting to reminisce on. So back in 98, when I joined the demo scene, there were a lot of cool disc mags like in phobia, for example. And Infobia was very big at the time. This is Infobia number 12, and it was the last Infobia that was released, and it was released in 96, I believe. And everybody kept asking for a new issue of Infobia, but it was a lot of work to put together. And they were pretty much not uh, periodic. Uh, they happened whenever they had enough articles, they felt that it was ready to, to put out. So there was like a void of news in between new disc mags coming out. And this is where newsletters come in and started to fill that void um, a lot of people were on IRC at the time or starting to join IRC uh, in the late 90s not everyone had access to the internet like all the time you had to connect via modem so it was like you would connect to the internet once in the evening or something like that and maybe connect to some BBS's people who did BBS's and um, I would just connect online to the internet, check the emails if I got anything, if I didn't, join the IRC for a couple of hours until my father's my my father and mother would kick me out of the line because I've been spending too much time online. Um, so yeah, um, newsletters would fill in that void of informing you of news that existed in the demo scene, and uh, newsletters like Demo News were extremely popular. Uh, this was the last issue of Demo News, Demo News 150, released in February 98. Um, and it was a particularly fat issue because they spent extra time uh, preparing it, but the concept usually was listing the latest files that happened to be uploaded into, uh, into an FTP that was the origin of Demo News, where was ran by, by Dan Wright, who was also running an FTP of some sort and asking people. So Demo News was like the newsletter that he would put out, asking people to upload things uh, that were still missing, but known to be out in the wild. Um, and also reporting other stuff that's been happening in the demo scene, new resources for people to, you know, new BBSs that you can uh, connect to, to get stuff, new websites that pop up, uh, articles on things, party reports on things. And it started becoming like a, a, a news hub, but that would come to you on your email box every month. Uh, so that was the point or upload it to a certain uh, location every month, a periodic thing, uh, like a like a newspaper of some sort and um this was a bit more reliable than disc max and that's why a lot of newsletters took some some following and demo news in particular was a very big one when i joined the demo scene uh, i was past a few issues of demo news and for me this was like uh, where you would go to get the latest information of demo news. And then it ended right when I joined the demo scene, which was late 97, early 98. This was the last issue. And I was like, why? This feels such a relevant, uh, you know, blank in the demo scene. Why did they end? And they do have like articles explaining why they're closing down and stuff like that. But I felt like the demo scenes could still use that. Um, there were other news forms in the demo scene happening at the time. Uh, Yugi was in its prime uh, back then, or starting to to reach its prime uh, at the early 90s, uh, at the late 90s, like 97. This is when Yugi started taking off and somehow semi-regular things, but it had the same problem that it's for articles, not really news, because now you have IRC, now you have BBS. So you don't really want your news to come three months later. You want to hear about the things now, no, this month, this week, 
Um, and this is also one of the main issues why disc mags lowered in popularity, in my humble opinion, and why people started stopped contributing as much. Um, there were other newsletters that came up to fill the void of... Um, of uh, demo news that demo news left uh, there were other newsletters around demo news was not the only one but it was the most famous one uh, steady line picked up the the, the ball uh, on on that in august 98 you can see here this is the second issue of static line uh, the first one was supposedly one month before but it doesn't say the month here and the thing with static line is that it was really well thought out like they gathered all the if i scroll down you can see the articles are very very detailed, very long articles, a lot of thought put into it, and they put together a whole team, like uh, Copland put together a bunch of his friends, um, he had a dedicated people who were supposed to write every month something about that, and uh, it mostly, mostly happened pretty well, and it was a good read. Um, but for me, when I when I read Static Line, I think I started Demo Journal without having seen Static Line at all. Um, but I was just talking a lot on um, on IRC and threw the idea around of um, what about doing a weekly newsletter instead of being a monthly newsletter. And people say, well, yeah, you know, just do it, which is the usual response in the demo scene. So I quickly threw together something, and this is horrible. I like I read this, and it it looks. It's full of grammatical errors, quickly hacked together, like the the lining is horrible, uh, it's so cringe. I, I was uploading this and I was like, oh god, what, what have I done? But the concept was there, which was to try to have uh, a regular newsletter, more regular than monthly, have it weekly based. And the concept was more to people would answer back a question that I would ask and at the same time I would try to get an interview with a demo scene legend and um, uh, we got some regular um, demo reviews, intro reviews, music reviews, uh, new mods and uh, also try to aggregate links that felt relevant uh, to the demo scene and you can see like few issues down the line well this is 62 so it's a bit more in the height of of uh, the more journal um it, it does look a bit better it has a like what is, what now they is demo party.net back then we didn't have that so we had to collect information on the different parties individually as you heard about them and the websites that they have and i would put everything together and do this little table and manage it and every time that i saw a new a new party being announced i would add it if there was a finally a demo party link i would add that correct the dates all that kind of stuff when the when the parties would end we would try to get the results also publish the results uh things like that interview pretty much in irc mode because i was always too lazy to edit it properly uh very lengthy demo review and seven was like a major force he did like very good reviews throughout all of the of these weeks seven is probably one of the persons who submitted more things to more more reviews to 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 demo journal from everyone else uh dealy uh, from exceed also helped a lot with intro reviews gecko picked up that thing afterwards and took over uh, dealy's job trying to do a weekly intro review intro in the sense of 64ks and 40ks um and also music uh, in the beginning was actually primer from from tokyo dawn records who was doing the music reviews and i also did some some gain x also did some and then triuk became our resident um resident music reviewer um the question i would ask a question when i was sending out the email uh, for for the latest demo journal, I would ask the question that would become uh, what people would have to answer for the next one. And then I would aggregate all the questions, all the answers that I would get, and put them together on this like list of quotes of people answering the question. So it's like kind of like a poll, but answering a specific question in particular, mini interview sort of form. Um, 
quote of the week, list of all the demo party link of all the demo scene web pages that exist for people, for other stuff, for disk mags, for FTPs, article invitations, like if you had a party invitation or something like that, you could send it to us and we would publish it as well. Uh, so yeah, it became a bit more organized later on, but we had a lot of them, or I had a lot of that, let's just do it, and then next issue will be slightly better sort of ethos, which is still, still, still nowadays not very, some, ah, how can I say this, um, it's a divided opinion, some people think that you should release early, release often, and uh, I'm, I'm very much in favor of this because it keeps the momentum going, the motivation going. You can try to get uh, more people involved as you do that. Every, for every release, try to get it a bit um, more involved, more, more... Um, and you can also iterate quickly on things, things that work, things that don't work, and you can just change it and, and see it immediately afterwards. And uh, people see you doing things faster, so they tend to help out a bit more. But it's also easy to lose motivation, like other people lose motivation when it sees that it's something a bit more sloppy made. And there's the other current that, you know, just prepares everything and then releases the best that it can possibly be. And I see this dichotomy very present between Demo Journal and Static Line. Like Static Line, they prepared everything like for months, talking with other people, preparing, um, getting people assigned for different things, uh, getting all the artwork and all that stuff. And I was just like, you know, let's throw something together and next week we'll think of something else. And looking back, I mean, issues of Static Line definitely have a lot more staying power. Uh, they're definitely a lot easier to read. I don't cringe when I read them. And when I read the early issues of demo, you know, I'm like, oh God, no, I can't believe I did this. This is so bad. Uh, like small errors, like the dates and time was wrong. Like I would put the wrong month by mistake. I forget to update the number. Small things like that that show that I just did one pass and didn't really look at it anymore. Or like tabs instead of spaces and then the alignments would be wrong. Things like that, that just, you know, break the readability of the whole thing, the, the presentation of the whole thing, and that I wasn't really uh, much uh, looking into it. Anyways, did it every week. Uh, at some point, it started weighing down on me. I wanted to do some other stuff. Um, and uh, also the internet started presenting more alternatives to ways to receive your news. Uh, it wouldn't just be IRC uh, or, and random websites. There were starting to be some dedicated websites to aggregate news. There were still some voids. And you can see like a rant in one of the later issues of Demo Journal. I'm complaining about that. Um, I, I, I was trying... I was trying to pass Demo Journal editorial job to someone else, but no one else would pick up. Um, and I rant here a little bit about uh, the other things that exist, like Orange Juice was uh, picking up and existing, Demoscene.org, which probably no one remembers anymore. No Error, but No Error was very focused on uh, music. Graphic Zone was for graphics, and then Scene.org, incoming uh, thing. But I, 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 one of the things that I complained here on this text is that it doesn't seem to be anything for news specifically. And you can see like the state of orange juice back then, thanks to Wayback Machine. Well, it's missing the graphics, but it's pretty much this. Uh, in some later years, it would start to look uh, a lot more, a lot more interesting. Like cleaner, it's very cute aesthetic. Back then, the resolutions of the screen were like 640 by 480. That's why it's so narrowed down. And uh, nowadays, it doesn't make any sense. But back then, uh, like it would fill the entire entire room, and you know, it would have news. So orange juice effectively picked up the news for the demo scene. The problem was that a lot of the people didn't really go to orange juice to submit their news. Uh, the same ways that even nowadays, you know, Orange Juice died out a few times, went, came back, and then died out again, and then came back again, and eventually, um, Bitfellas replaced that job of being the hub for news on the demo scene, which not that many people really use. Uh, people just, you know, spam on Puet or, or IRC or whatever, and they expect people to know about, uh, but really the main place where you're supposed to list the news is on, on Bitfellas. Uh, and that's what Puet aggregates from. Uh, all the, the news from here 
are on the front page of Puet. These are the news here. So they, that was the attempt, and this comes from way back, like, um, even on the early 2000s, it was already aggregating from orange juice. The first iteration of Puet, or, well, not the very first, or one of the first iterations that Analog did of Puet already had orange juice news here, because it's stupid to be redoing news on several places when you can just syndicate the news form. The problem was, as I was mentioning before, is that a lot of people didn't really submit the news to orange juice they would just assume that someone would report it would go by word of mouth they would uh, send the news to uh, a disk mag or they would send the news to to uh, to a newsletter uh, they would spam it on irc and you know they would say my job here is done people will spread the rest through word of mouth um, you know and if it's an invitation for a for a demo they they don't do an invitation text they do an actual demo and the invitation text is in the demo and they just don't submit Submit the demo in or or the invitation on on any news uh, locations. So um, there was this moment in the beginning of two thousands where there was this void of uh, news information, which I think Orange Juice and Puet then eventually replaced, and that's why the rest of the newsletters sort of died out. Static lines still happened for quite a long time. I think the last issue they had was two thousand and five or something like that, uh, but. Um, it was very much focused on music, around the music scene, and it, it kind of mirrors uh, the American demo scene, because the American demo scene was a lot more focused on the tracker scene and the art scene uh, than, than actually making demos and demo parties, because they had less demo parties than us here in Europe. And I think Static Line reflects that a little bit. Anyways, at the end of Demo Journal in 2000, um, I sent all the reviewers to submit to Static Line. Uh, Seven was already a collaborator of Static Line, I think, and Triuk also became one. I'm not sure if Gecko did did it or not, but I sent that. And the last issues of Demo Journal was just me asking questions by email and then posting the results of the poll next week, along with some other question and the news that I've been getting from from different places, from IRC and stuff, and and from people who would email me that. It died out in uh, August, I think, 2000. That was the last issue that I did of Demo Journal. And I thought I'd bring it back a few times in different forums, in a blog form, in, a, in something else. And I guess the reports that I now do in, the, in YouTube, in this channel, and the monthly reports are sort of like different to take on that concept of getting all the information that's been happening on the demo scene and, and try to summarize it in a way that people can go there and catch up without having to pay attention to everything at the same time. So those are the roots and demo journal. I, I when I was adding demo journal to demo zoo, I had to read most of the articles again. I skimmed through most of it, of course, but it made me cringe so much. There were so many things there that I wish I would have made different or paid more attention to. And I get that a lot of it was just, you know, last minute push out the door sort of thing. I have to do it every single week and I don't have time for this. And I want to do something else. So I just push it out in whatever quality that it is. But no, looking back, it doesn't feel like it's. Um, it's not a legacy that I'm particularly proud of. There are some good elements in there. The the reviews are pretty good, like the demo reviews from Seven. They should definitely be archived somewhere more prominently because they're all like very insightful um, and, and correlate, explain a lot of the demo scene aspects that were back then. Uh, the reviews from Gecko were also pretty good. Dealey's reviews on intros were also pretty good. Triox reviews of music were also pretty good. And I kind of wish those would have been complied in in, uh, in a better form, which I actually tried to do something like that called Sunray, the Sunray review mag uh, in 99. And it was one of the reasons that I had to stop uh, Demo Journal for a month. And during that month, Melvin of How Job uh, took over the editorial work of Demo Journal, and he did a pretty good job. But he focused a lot on the Finnish scene, which kind of makes sense because it's what I, he knew best. But at the same time, I always, for me, Demo Scene always been international, not focused on a single uh, nationality. It would have been cool to see like Demo Journal hop around from different uh, local scenes or bringing extra focus into different local scenes, which never really happened. But well, yeah. 
anyways, those are the reminiscing days that I that I had about when I was uploading uh, demo demo journal to demo zoo. And uh, yeah, a lot of food for thought. And I hope it was interesting for people who didn't live that period or even for those who did. I guess it's interesting to reminisce on that as well. And I would I would like to thank everybody who did ever helped on Demo Journal. Um, and, and there were a lot of people. Uh, Dili did a, the... Who did uh, uh, a lot of the intros um, reviewing uh, DC One, who ran the Flurp uh, website, uh, FTP site, and uh, he also sent me for many issues. He sent me like the new, uh, the list of new files that are, are happening on Flurp, and we bundled it together on Demo Journal. Um, Red Hound from scene.org also did that for a few issues. I don't know why we discontinued that. I guess because it made sense that people would check the ftp site directly i'm not sure and my editorials don't give any clue on that because it always it just jumps from 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 thing anyways gain x also did some intro reviews and music reviews uh gecko uh, also did a lot of intros reviews melvin for picking up the the whole editorial thing for a month uh primer from uh, from tokyo dawn records also helped me in the beginning receptor uh did the webmaster work for a long time ZD did a logo for the for the website as well um scrabble picked up uh, the the website administrator uh, on the later parts of the of the of demo journal um salami helped me in the beginning also with some hosting and stuff i have no clue what happened to salami i haven't talked with him in in decade over a decade uh, sweeper also helped with the website stuff uh, zoom from from poland also did a guest issue i believe and also helped with a lot of news and stuff and there was a pretty good connection between demo journal and the polish uh disc mag scene as well and S S zoom did a lot of the bridge between that zoom and gardner um Trioc did all the music reviews and as uh, the already mentioned had done the logo also a lot of the artists that did ashi logos for it uh, h7 um riven of the of the loop also did a logo and uh, f quite a few other people did some logos bracket also did something at some point um so yeah thank you everybody wh whoever collaborated on that more journal i think it was a fun experience um, I, I wish I had made it something that was more memorable uh, for the end of years. One of the ideas that I had when conjuring all of these, uploading these to demos, who was try, try to make a demo journal number 100 and make like, um, pick the best articles, or the best interviews, the best uh, reviews and put them there. Also the logos from the different editions and stuff like that and try to make like one big final issue that would be like, the behemoth with all the content but i think with all of the interviews that exist on it would be like way too long and and not very fun to to read overall so i i'm i'm, I'm kind of divided on that idea but yeah those are the thoughts that have been going through my head i wanted to do a quick video just you know talking about it let me know what you think on the comments below if you remember the journal at all if you don't uh, if you kind of miss it but um i do kind of miss it myself but I think the time has moved on from newsletters. No one wants to read things uh, in depth uh, online anymore. I think people want uh, the podcast content, the video content nowadays. And this is why this is why disc mags are no longer a thing on the PC scene, at least. Um, yeah, so that's it for now. See you next video. Bye bye, everybody. Have a great day.